Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video again a C490S topic and the 10900K. In today's video we are going to delete the CPU, compare how it will work out and if we can improve the temperatures applying a liquid metal to the die or between the die and the heat spreader. And once we're done with everything we will compare this CPU and the specific die, heat spreader size and everything to the 8th generation, the 9th generation and see what the size difference is like heat spreader thickness and all those details. Right now the 10900K is running on a Maximus 12 Extreme at 5.1 GHz about 1.33 volt, and that's about the maximum this particular CPU can do. It's a retail CPU. It can run 5.2 GHz but it needs about 1.4 volt, and at 1.4 volt, it's just getting way too warm even though I'm running a custom water cooling right now 360 radiator still 5.2 GHz would be too much. That's why I'm running 5.1 Let's just go to Windows, see how the temperatures will look like and then we will proceed with deleting. BIOS setting wise you can see AI overclock tuner is set to XMP running 4266 MHz XMP right now. All core ratio limit is set to 51 which equals 5.1 GHz DRAM frequency 4266. Digi plus VRM settings are load line calibration level 7 so it doesn't really drop down under load. CPU current capability 140% and then we have uh, CPU cache ratio at 4.8 GHz, fixed CPU voltage 1.33 volt, DRAM voltage 1.45 and that's it. Nothing else is needed for OC, very similar to 9900K. Cooling wise, as I said before, 360 radiator, 3 Corsair fans, EK pump, everything running at about 50% speed. So not maximum cooling performance, but it's something you would definitely use in your own system. And here the Maximus 12 Extreme. I have to say it's a quite beautiful board with a normal EK block, just running some tubes from it. And I would say let's just run some Cinebench R20 and see what the temps look like. You can see the CPU voltage is dropping down to 1.30, 1.31 volt, which is a very healthy V-drop. Temperature wise, we are in the mid 80s. Cinebench score is 6600 point. Lowest temperature is core one with 79 degrees Celsius and highest is core two with 87 degrees Celsius. Everything else is like in the mid to low 80s. Here we have the beauty on the table next to it already two deleted 9900K and 8700K which I already measured yesterday. We're going to compare those in a second once we have this one disassembled. Should also work very nicely with the delete die mate 2. In general the internals and the soldering should be quite similar to the 9900K except for the thinner die. Let's go. First insert the CPU into the delete die mate 2. Should still be the same, just triangle to triangle. The indium solder is very soft, therefore even though we moved it by about 3 to 4 mm in this direction, IHS is still quite firmly stuck on the die, which means we're just rotating it by 180 degree and then move the IHS back, should help to lose it. First impression, obviously CPU is soldered, die looks similar to a 9900K when it comes to the width, only looks longer and the glue around the die also looks thicker. Also if we compare this on the IHS, there's a lot more glue on there than on the previous 9900K. I will do some measurements and then we will be back. Before we can proceed with applying liquid metal to the die, we first have to clean the CPU from all the glue residues, also remove all the remaining indium from the die carefully with a knife and then we can apply liquid metal. As usual, be careful with the edges. If you cut with a knife over the edge like this, it's very likely to break it off. Just cut from the inside to outside. Should be more safe.
done with the measurements and we can compare 8700K, 9900K and 10900K from left to right orientation. All of them have the triangle facing to the bottom left. What you will notice is that the notches on 87 and 9900K are facing upwards while 10900K has them facing downwards. If we compare the weight of the CPU, 8700K, 4.3 gram, 9900K, 5.4 gram, 10900K, 5.4 gram as well. That could be measurement tolerances comparing 9900K and 10900K. Now we are talking about the die size. All three CPUs have the, the same width when it comes to the die size. All of them have 9.2 millimeter and the length is different. 8700K 16.7 millimeter, 9900K 19.6 millimeter, 10900K about 10% longer than the 9900K with about 22.4 millimeter, which also gets confirmed if we calculate the die size about 153 square millimeters on the 8700K, 9900K 180 square millimeters, and 10900K about 200 and six square millimeters. Quick comparison of the PCB height, 8700K had a very thin PCB similar to 6700K and also 7700K. All three generations had a PCB height of 0.87 millimeters. 9900K and also 10900K have the same PCB height of about 1.15. Um, they should have the same, it's just measurement tolerance I think comparing those numbers right here. Comparing the die height, that should be the more interesting value. 8700K again had the same die height as 6700K and also 7700K. 9900K was double the die height. We already analyzed this when the CPU was released and now I thought with the 10900K they would maybe go back to the original height of the 8700K and the previous CPUs with 0.44 millimeter but they found something in between and now the die height is 0.58 millimeter and that's also confirming what Intel told us in the initial brief when Steve from Gamers Nexus asked about the die height difference. We have about 0.3 millimeter difference in die height. Quick comparison of the heat spreaders again left to right 8700K, 9900K and 10900K. You will straight notice that the one on the left doesn't have the gold plating on the inside which is because 8700K was not soldered while while the other two CPUs are using solder tim aka S tim. The 10900K is physically also a little bit different. We have this 45 degree angle on the side. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. It also feels like they're changing the IHS physically a little bit from each generation, but it doesn't seem to have a real technical reason more to maybe differentiate them from the outside. Weight comparison also confirms the different die height because all of those CPUs essentially have the same height when it comes to the CPU itself eventually. Therefore 8700K, smallest die height, therefore the highest IHS size and also highest weight 26.6 gram, 9900K 20.2 gram and 10900K 22.2 gram. If we just measure the height of the IHS in the center we have 3.1 millimeter on the 8700K, 2.3 millimeter on the 9900K and about 2.6 millimeter on the 10900K. With the measurements we can confirm what Intel told us in the initial presentation that the die got a little bit thinner about 0.3 millimeter and we know from grinding 9900Ks that lowering the die height by like 0.2 0.3 millimeter we can get a temperature improvement of maybe like 3 to 4 degree Celsius and that's what we can probably expect from the 10900K in terms of temperature improvement. You won't really notice a difference if you compare a 10900K to a 9900K. Every CPU has an individual temperature therefore just 3-4 degree won't really change what you will get as your first impression. When it comes to the solder itself I measured a height of about 0.3 millimeter of the indium itself and that's also the reason why we should be able to improve the temperature by using liquid metal because we can make the gap even thinner maybe like 0.05 millimeter thickness of the liquid metal layer it will basically sit directly in between the die and the IHS therefore we can maybe get 
I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven degree more out of this. We will see. I'm just going to apply liquid metal on dye and IHS and then we'll rerun the previous test. CPU is sitting back in the socket. I didn't re-glue the IHS, just put liquid metal in between, put it back into the socket, same thermal paste, reapplied the same BIOS profile, went back into the OS. I also noted down the temperatures of our previous run. Now I have a room temperature of 23.0 degrees Celsius, while in the other run, in today, in the afternoon, we had 22.5 degrees Celsius. Room temperature shouldn't make a big difference, just so you know that factor as well. CPU score 6588 points, which is pretty much the same as the first run. I opened the notepad and put the max temperature of the previous run next to it. On this line right here, you can see what we just ran after deleting. And here we have the temperature difference, which means that core one was by 5 degrees Celsius colder and is now 74 degrees Celsius max. That's the smallest difference. Biggest difference at the moment core 6 with 10 degrees Celsius difference. Previously 85 and now 75 degrees Celsius. However, this is a bigger difference than what I expected. I will just rerun it and we will do a second run to compare and see if maximum temperature is increasing. On the second run, as expected, the temperature difference is a little bit smaller simply because there is more heat still in the water cooling loop. I ran it after like two minutes um, after the first run and on my initial run, I had like 15 minutes where I didn't do anything on the system. So it should have been the lowest idle temperature in the water cooling loop possible. Now with from minus four to minus nine degrees Celsius difference, overall about seven degrees Celsius improvement. I would say it's kind of expected. It's very much similar to 9900K and also previous CPUs which were soldered, um, temperature improvement with liquid metal. Therefore, nothing unexpected. Six to seven to eight degrees Celsius is what you can expect if you decide to delete your 10900K and go for liquid metal. If you say, okay, I really need the last five degrees Celsius, then you can delete your 10900K with Delhi Dime 2, put liquid metal on there. It will work out fine however the benefit will be quite small don't expect that you can get 200 megahertz more out of your cpu simply because you deleted it by the way we're also working on a direct die frame it already has passed development phase it's already in production it will work ninth gen direct die frame obviously does not fit because as you've seen previously in the last minutes the 9900k has a completely different die size die height and therefore we had to adjust to make a new direct die frame i already tested everything everything has been approved and once it's available we will make another video with direct die cooling and i will give you the temperature data to that and also obviously the link to the direct die frame so much about this video with comparison of the last three generations when it comes to cpu sizes and also temperature improvement with deleting thanks for joining in and see you next time bye When you're testing and wondering why you have such high temperatures, even though you're using a 360 radiator. By the way, don't worry, those fans are running with like 250 to 300 RPM. That's not dangerous at all. <laughs>